It was just a week ago that we had a look at the brand new Toyota Grand Highlander. And to be honest, we were so impressed with that vehicle. In fact, here's what we had to say. I think Toyota, they have they, nailed it. Yeah, they did nail it. They have it. nailed it. Very it looks premium. really premium. And you know, it's like, what's interesting is I'm going to Texas uh, next week to drive the Lexus TX, which is kind of like the Grand Highlander. I don't know what more they could do because this kind of feels like almost like a Lexus. We're here in beautiful Austin, Texas with this gorgeous red Lexus TX. And in my opinion, this is probably the best three row SUV that Lexus offers. Let's have a look. Ground up design, new styling. You see it in the front, you have that recognizable spindle grille, however, they call this a unified spindle grille now, and I like it. It's very subdued. You have color matched grille here, and a lot of aero has been done throughout this vehicle. They've even changed the emblem, and the better aerodynamics are going to aid in handling as well, efficiency and quietness for sure. Now, this type of boomerang LED daytime running light has been reversed now. It's a really, really nice seamless design. Overall, I think the styling is quite subtle, and I think I like that a lot. This is the base luxury in Canada here. You get 20 inch wheels as standard equipment. If you go into the executive, you get into 22 inch wheels. F Sport, when you get into the TX500 and the 550H Plus, 22 inch wheels, huge, huge wheels. Coming over to the side here, you'll see all the way down, you get that black pillar that gives it a floating roof design. And one of my favorite features, as soon as I, as I grab the door handle, I'm like, oh yeah, this has the e-latch system. It's a gentle pull and it just adds to the luxury premium experience. We'll talk about more of that when we get on the inside. The doors open nice and wide. You have proximity on both front and rear doors. And yeah, this is long back here. In the back, you get that nice clean light treatment that mimics the front here. You have the Lexus letters up front here. Now you can get a hands-free power liftgate, but a power liftgate is standard on all trim levels. Lift it up. You do have a close and a lock button as well. You know we're big fans of that. Behind the third row, you get 20 cubic feet or 569 liters of storage, tons of room. You can fit seven carry-on cases here. You need extra room while well, you fold that third row down. Now this is the base trim, so this does not have the power third row seats, but just flick down and as it go goes down, that headrest will pop down by itself. Now if you get into the power third row, you can actually operate it from the back or even from the driver's seat, you can do it through their media system. Through the screen, you can fold that third row down, of course, without anyone in it. Folding all of them down gets you a class leading 2,747 liters or 97 cubic feet of space. A ton of room for this size of vehicle. Seriously, it's, it's huge, it really is. I wonder if Lexus decided to hold the TX event in Texas, TX. I don't know, but this vehicle is not built in Texas. This is going to be built in Indiana, first Lexus to be built there. Now on the inside here, remember on the Grand Highlander, we're like, wow, did they ever do a good job? Which I still stand by that, but there just is something about a Lexus. Now up front here, this is very different from the Highlander as well. Uh, Standard, you get a seven inch display, but that's just basically on the base model, on the luxury term in Canada. And then you get the optional 12.3 inch multi-information display. Lots of information here. We have a HUD here, head up display, and all TXs come standard with the 14 inch Lexus interface. We have featured this before. It is, it's a really joy to use. It's easy to use. You have kind of a dock system on the left side for your Navi, your music, uh, all your, your vehicle mode. So there is no drive mode button here. You would actually go into your, your vehicle and, and you can actually go to drive mode, sport, eco, custom, wireless, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, not all trims get the panoramic camera, but this one is equipped. So if we actually just, but in reverse, you see we have a 360 camera and we can also activate it by the button as well. We also have automatic parking here. Uh, I don't wanna make this video too long, but you do have that panoramic view where it's gonna 
circle around here. We have heated and ventilated seats uh, up front here. We also have heated seats in the back that are available and ventilated as well, just like that Grand Highlander uh, heated steering wheel. Trim levels may vary in North America depending on where you're from, if you're in Canada or the US, so make sure, check with your local uh, Lexus website for what trim levels are offered. But on the most part, they are fairly similar. We had a chance to drive a base trim TX, and I gotta say, you know, it's like, it's pretty well equipped. So in Canada, it starts with the luxury trim, and this is the kicker here. So luxury trim, it, you know, it comes with the 20 inch wheels, it comes with the 14 inch screen, even the seats, they, they, they're not full leather, but they look and feel like it. Uh, so it's really well done. Now, if you match a luxury trim TX to a luxury trim RX, we're talking a difference of $1,800. So not a big premium at all. Not everybody needs a vehicle this size though. So they, they're giving you options for sure. Down below, we have wireless charging, large, large cup holders, they're big squares and you can unlock them. You can take it right out. So you can have more room if you wanna use it just for some storage or if you actually wanna take this out to wash it, which is nice. Now this is something a little bit different here is this middle, compartment here it is kind of a butterfly design and there is a a good reason for it so i'm driving here my elbow is on the rest there now the passenger whether if you're from the front or the back if they can actually go and they can still open up one side and access what's in here whatever you have in here which happens to be some cables same goes for if you're on the passenger side you can open this or you can open both of them as well this one is also equipped with a large panoramic roof with a sunshade. And for your audio files, this is available with the 1800 watt Mark Levinson sound system. Yeah, it sounds really, really good. Also, you do get a digital rear view mirror on the higher trims. We talked about that in the Grand Highlander briefly. Great for a vehicle that is a people mover like this. So you have all your stuff back there, you get people blocking your view, just flip that up, you get a nice clear wide view. So it's really, really nice. But everyone wants to know, what's it like in the back? Let's go. Into the back, well the second row of this TX. Lots of room, right? What I like, you have sliding second row seats. Also, you can actually recline them as well. Also, big bonus. Pull this down, we have an armrest and we have drink holders here. We have climate control in the rear as well as two USB-C, so lots of connectivity, lots of light in here. Headroom is tons, tons, as well as leg and knee room. Lots of room there. Now, this TX350 has a bench in the second row. So this is a seven passenger vehicle. If you go into the TX500H, that only comes as a six passenger. So you get two, two, two for the configuration. So it's a six passenger vehicle, lots of room back here. Really, really enjoy this. This is gonna be great for families. All right, into the third row. To get in, it's a one touch. You have that button there and it folds and it slides for you. All right, let's close the door. I'm gonna sl slide the seat all the way back. That is at its furthest position just to actually demonstrate for you how much room there is. Remember, you can slide this up. And I am five, ten and a half, and my knees are not touching at all that second row. That is pretty good. And my head, I've got that much room, lots of arm room. Now the biggest difference you're gonna find between this and the Grand Highlander is that one has a three seat bench in the rear. This is two people only which gives you more room more room for your arms you also have usb you have your own air vent back here you don't feel claustrophobic at all and you do have a button here if i want to hit that i can power recline the seat this far back actually and once again this seat is as far back as it goes this is actually usable not just for kids I'd have no issue riding like an hour drive back here. Let's drive.
Obviously, there are some similarities between the Grand Highlander and this Lexus TX because they both share the same GAK platform. Uh, this one has been tweaked though, for sure. It's not exactly the same as, as a Grand Highlander. First of all, sound-wise, the, also the reinforcement-wise, there's more reinforcement used to make it stiffer. There's, they use more sound deadening. You know, this is a Lexus. We just drove over some really rough pavement there and it's still, and here's some more coming up here, some groove pavement. Just to give you an idea what it's like in the real world. It's quite quiet. Now, they also have three powertrains each, but the powertrains for the TX are a little bit different. We have the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine, which is the same as the Grand Highlander, a little bit extra horsepower, probably due to the fact that this uses premium fuel. So 275 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. That's going through an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now in Canada, all TX models come standard with all-wheel drive. Uh, in the US, if you're watching, you do get the option of front wheel drive as well. You guys get more options than we do, but you have a lot more population. For this all wheel drive system, it normally runs at 75% uh, to the front and 25% to the rear. If you need extra uh, traction in the rear, it will go up to 50-50 on this. Now just pay attention to that because on the other all wheel drive systems, it's a little bit different. It's nice that it has the eight speed transmission and the torque does come on fairly low. I definitely notice it's not as much torque as that, that uh, hybrid max for sure. It moves this large vehicle around adequately. No problem there at all. Now ride wise, it's fairly soft and it just, once again, it's quiet in here and that's the, the experience that you expect from a Lexus for sure. Visibility, great, big mirrors, you ride nice and high, you have lots of light, and of course we mentioned that digital rear view camera there. There is a little bit of lag right at the start, but once you get past that little bit of lag, every gear is coming on nice and strong. And we do have paddle shifters. I think there may be some pumped in sound as well. Vehicle like this, most of the time you're gonna be carrying passenger, <laughs> passengers around. So you're not gonna be driving really, really aggressively or spirited with all the passengers, especially kids. My kids, they always get sick. All right, next up, the TX500H. On a regular basis, if you're driving the kids to and from soccer, like basically a soccer mom or dad, using a TX like a minivan, the 350 is going to suit all of your needs, no issue, good fuel economy, all wheel drive, lots of room for all the kids uh, in all the rows, no problem. But if you are a parent that you're doing that, but you're driving this, um, maybe you're driving it to and from work and you enjoy a little bit more spirited drive, then this 500H is definitely the one to get. First of all, the torque is so noticeable right off the line uh, compared to that 350. All right, from a stop, here we go. Okay, that is zero to 60, roughly about six seconds or so. <laughs> totally respectable for a 3.0 SUV. Now we're riding on the 22 inch wheels on these rougher roads. I don't see a huge penalty for the harshness at all. Up front, you have a 64 kilowatt motor. You also have a 76 kilowatt in the rear. This has the direct four all wheel drive system. So different than the 350 system. This one will run at 100% front most of the time. If you need more uh, traction for that rear, it'll go up to 80% in the rear and 20% in the front. And that's a lot more than the 50-50 that you get with that uh, 350. Also, this is equipped with four wheel steering. Going slow in parking lots, it can turn opposite direction, give you sharper turning radius uh, up to 40 degrees. And at speed, it's going to go the same direction. And it's just gonna make this large three row SUV handle and corner like it's a smaller vehicle for sure. Absolutely love that feature. Also, brake wise, you get larger brakes, six piston calipers on here, and it is noticeable how the brakes feel and how powerful they are compared to that 350. 
Adaptive suspension is also available on this TX500H. Now the 500H only comes in F-Sport packages, F-Sport uh, Performance 2 and Performance 3. Uh, so yeah, more power, way more drivability. Now this route we're taking is really good. We've got a lot of good corners, but it's a very bumpy road. Suspension is handling it no problem. Once again, very quiet, very quiet in here. But when you do put your foot into it, you can hear, and uh, the best thing though, you can feel the, the grunt of this entire system, everything working in conjunction with, with the electric motors, the, the six-speed transmission, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. So this does not have uh, an eCVT, it's a six-speed auto, very similar to what we had in the Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. Put your foot into it. Okay, really good. Going up that hill, good response. The steering is quite light. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit stiffer uh, on this 500. All right, one of the biggest differences between the Grand Highlander and the Lexus TX is what we're in right now, and that is the TX550H Plus. Plus for the plug-in hybrid system. Now this uses an 18.1 kilowatt hour battery and gets you 53 kilometers of EV only range. Pretty decent, but not only that, it gives you power. Under the hood, you get a three and a half liter V6 and that's matched to that hybrid system, electric motors. It's going to give you 406 horsepower. So this is the most powerful TX in the lineup, but also the thriftiest, 7.8 liters per 100K combined. But if you wanna plug it in, 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, really, really decent. And when you put your foot into this thing, it's pulls you, but it's smooth because this does not have a conventional automatic transmission. No eight speed, no six speed. This is a variable transmission. Normally, I'm not a big fan of it, but I think they do work well uh, on hybrid vehicles, especially a plug-in hybrid when you have the larger electric motors because you have so much low torque from the electric motors that it just picks up where you kind of have that little bit of a wind up with a CVT. Corning wise, very, very stable. Once again, it doesn't feel like you're driving something really, really heavy. You do feel that you're driving something substantial and big though. If this is anything similar, of course it is, you know, to the, like the RAV4 Prime or the NX uh, plug-in hybrid or the RX, you know that Toyota has made this plug-in system really operate like an, a full BEV or a battery electric vehicle until you run out of juice and then after that it just goes back and works as a regular hybrid so really really good efficiency there but not only that if you have shorter trips uh maybe your commute is within you know 50 kilometers or about 30 miles every day going in and out of the city no problem you will rarely have to put gasoline in this car you can run it like a regular ev plus the other bonuses of a PHEV is you can actually drive it in the uh, HOV lanes with a single occupant and sometimes, you know, in the malls and airports and stuff like that, if there's a plug open, plug in there, get some juice and get that really nice front row parking spot. The great thing about this Lexus system is even though right now we don't have any juice left in the battery, but we are in EV mode. So right now we're coasting down a hill, but even if we're on level ground, it will revert to EV mode whenever it can. And when it does, it's very, very seamless. There's no shutter or anything when that, that internal combustion engine comes on at all. Those are all good reasons and more reason why this is really, the TX really is the best re-row that you can buy in the Lexus lineup. All right, let's wrap it up and give you some pricing. So what's it gonna cost you to get into a new Lexus TX? Well, in Canada, it's gonna cost you $68,250 if you wanna go for the base luxury trim. Comes with a lot of standard features. And as we mentioned, it's only $1,800 between luxury trim of the TX and luxury trim of the RX. So you know what? You can kind of juggle that around. If you don't need the space, the extra third row and extra large vehicle, then go with the RX. If you need that third row, go with the TX for sure, because it's not uh, a huge premium that you're gonna pay. The 350 is the one I think most people are gonna buy. 
for one reason, one extra seat, because this comes as a seven passenger vehicle with that bench seat in the middle. However, if you go to the executive trim, you can get this in a two, two, two configuration. If you go into the F Sport, which is that TX500H, that comes strictly as a six passenger vehicle only which is a little bit unfortunate because there are some people out there that may want the looks, the extra power, but might not need uh, the adaptive suspension, the larger brakes, uh, and they want a seven passenger vehicle, that extra passenger, that's gonna make a big difference. Speaking of that F-Sport though, that TX500H starts at $84,200. Yes, it is definitely considerably more than that base TX350, but you are getting a lot more horsepower with that hybrid powertrain. You get the larger brakes, adaptive suspension, and that four-wheel steering. So you get a lot of good dynamic driving with that package. And the last is that TX550H Plus, which is that plug-in hybrid with over 400 horsepower. At this time, we don't have any pricing on that though, but you know that one's gonna be a big seller if you can get one. So anyways, I think Lexus has you covered, regardless if you want two or three rows. If you want three rows in a truck, go for that GX or the LX, but in my opinion, if you don't need off-road capability, this TX is pretty well the best three-row you can buy, hands down, from Lexus.